Remember, I told you earlier in this program that the United States of America's economy, the U.S. dollar, is the last hurdle to be surmounted for the purpose of establishing this one world order. And the Jesuits plan from the time, from the time this country was conceived, but from definitely from the time that Jacob Schiff touched down here in the 1800s, was to take over, was to set up the Federal Reserve and take over the banking system for the purpose of establishing a one world order. America's banking system had to be subverted to establish a one world order. This man was a Jesuit. And how many Jesuits does uh, Obama have in his administration? Are you getting the picture? I'm just trying to draw a couple of lines for you. Maybe you'll, maybe the uh, the outline will start becoming clear to you as we move forward. Listen, historically, the presidents of our country knew that they needed to keep a ten foot pole between themselves and the Vatican. Now we have presidents visiting the Pope, bowing down to the Pope. Just look at the disgusting video footage of Obama meeting with the Pope, bowing down to the Pope, calling him your holiness? Oh my, listen. A man by the name of Charles Chiniqui, a man by the name of Charles Chiniqui, Chiniqui um, wrote an awesome book by the name of 50 Years in the Church of Rome. He was actually represented by Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was his uh, was his uh, attorney in this case. Uh, I believe it was in the 1850s. In this case that he had against us, um, the Catholic Church, because they were slandering his character. Okay, and uh, through the you know the excellent work of Abraham Lincoln, Chinnikwe was able to win his case and thereby he incurred the great wrath of the Jesuit order and not only himself but Abraham Lincoln incurred the, the wrath of the Jesuit order all right keep that in mind because we're getting ready to go to break I want to keep it all in mind so here we have a man by the name of Charles Chittick we wrote a book by the name of 50 years in the church room uh, Google that book real good book excellent information in there man was represented by Abraham Lincoln and Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by the Jesuit order. A man by the name of John Surratt, who was directly a part of the plot to kill Abraham Lincoln. After everything went down, he was found, he had passed through Liverpool and was found in the Vatican in the Pope's personal part. The man that was a part of the plot directly to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. Jesuits. And in Abraham Lincoln's words, speaking to Charles Chiniqui, President of the United States, your friends, the Jesuits, have not yet killed me, but they would have surely done it when I passed through their most devoted city, Baltimore, had I not defeated their plans by passing incognito a few hours before they expected me. We have the proof that the company which had been selected and organized to murder me, murder me, was led by a rabid Roman Catholic called Burn. It was almost entirely composed of Roman Catholics. A few days ago, I saw Mr. Samuel Morse, the learned inventor of the electric telegraph. He told me that when he was in Rome, he found out the proof of a formidable conspiracy against this country and all its institutions. It is evident that it is to the intrigues and emissaries of the Pope that we owe, in great part, the horrible civil war which is threatening to cover the country with blood, shed, and ruins. This is the words of Abraham Lincoln in respect to a plot by the Jesuits to kill him that was orchestrated by the Pope and our president clearly said at that time that there was a, a conspiracy afoot 
to overthrow the institutions of the United States of America being perpetrated by the Roman Catholic Church, the hit put out by the Pope and the hitmen, the Jesuits. And how many Jesuits does President Barack Obama have in his personal administration at this time? More than a handful. Same guys that want to overthrow our country. Same guys that sent a man by the name of Jacob Schiff in the 1800s here to establish the Federal Reserve and overthrow the American banking system. Yeah, those same Jesuits are the same Jesuits that mentored our current president and are currently in bed with our current president in Washington, D.C., the seat of the government of our beloved United States of America. Do you see how serious the situation is right now? This is absolute absurdity, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I came across a letter. I came across a letter the other day, and um, I found it on a pretty interesting website. It's called remnantofgod.org, remnantofgod.org. And it's a letter from a former president of the United States, Harry Truman, to the Pope. And uh, this letter uh, was said to be written in the year 1959. So you know what was going on during that time. This letter is very interesting. Now keep in mind that Barack Obama just called uh, the Pope your holiness. Bush called the Pope your holiness. Every president of the United States is calling the Pope your holiness. Listen to uh, Truman's words to Pope Pio. I probably said that wrong. I probably said Pius or it's Pope Pio. <laughs> Pope Pio the twelfth. He said, Dear Mr. Pacelli, this is our uh, Truman speaking. Dear Mr. Pacelli, as a member of the Baptist Church and executive chief of this great nation and the more powerful nation in the whole world, everyone calls me Mr. Truman. I cannot call you holiness. This title belongs only to the creator of the universe. We also in the United States consider all men are equal in the eyes of the creator, and we call them by their own names. For the same reason, I must address you as Mr. Pacelli. Let me stop right there. I don't even want to go any further. First of all, let's just clap for Harry Truman there. A man who was able to realize the fact that it is absolutely an absurdity for a man who claims to be a Christian to address another mere mortal as your holiness? And yet, all of these quote-unquote Christian presidents that we've had over the course of the last few years, they find it within their power as so-called followers of Christ to address this man, this man, that is dressed up in pagan costume as your holiness? The letter goes on to say, the people that elected me as their executive chief are a peace-loving people and a democratic nation. For this reason, my duty is to find collaboration from those that are in reality looking for peace and are working to obtain peace and not from those pushing war. I believe that yourself and neither your church are included with those that are truly working for peace. First, the founding fathers of this great nation knew that throughout history, 
the nature of your church is love for politics in Europe. We are convinced that our democracy will not last if we get in the mixture of all of your doctrines and intrigue as the governments of Europe did. We know that you yourself and the Kaiser were part of the intrigue that created against the Allies during the First World War. You also spent 12 years in Germany during the ascension of Hitler to power. You also negotiated with the execrable Franz van Papen, or Papen, a double pope to help Hitler to power. 